everybody. <laughs> We're back. Yeah, it's Julie and Ashley. And we are Swarthy Sailors from uh, Shelburne, Nova Scotia. Or we're yeah. filming in Shelburne. We're not from Shelburne. <laughs> we're CFAs, come from a ways. As yeah, a yeah. yeah. You may know the uh, hit Broadway musical of that name, right? Yeah. That's what that yeah. musical is Come called. from a way, yeah. That's the yeah. Gander Airport. Yeah, it's not Newfoundland, yeah. but same term. Anywhere on the East Coast. If you're not from here, you're... Alien. I'm actually getting ready to go to Newfoundland soon. And I'm excited. Soon. I lived in Newfoundland for a year and it was crazy. We're going to go to Dildo, I think. Yes. And get Christmas Christmas presents for everyone. <laughs> There's a lot of dirty names in Newfoundland, but yeah. it's fantastic. It's a cool place to visit. I lived there for a year. I went to Mun there and uh, I thought it was a really fantastic place to live. So yeah. I almost went to school there. And I, I mean, now I'm glad I didn't because I met my husband who's Nova Scotian. But I still think it would probably have been pretty cool. Yeah. You'll have fun. I'm excited. All right, we got another box of books from the book outlet. I had a little bit of a problem. I love, I love buying books from there because there's all, always something I want, and it's free shipping if you order forty-five dollars or more, and you can get some really good deals in uh, hardcovers, box sets. All it's kinds apparently of stuff. read. Ridiculously low prices. Ridiculously. <laughs> there's one. I love a good. Pun. There's one physical store in Canada in St. Catharines. So if you live anywhere near the GTA, go out there because, I mean, I would be there. And I'm driving home for a visit in October and I'm like, should I take the American <laughs> way just so I end up near Book Outlet? But it's going to be uh, uh, more expensive trip. <laughs> anyway, let's get in this. So again, I don't really know. These boxes have been here for a little while. I've been waiting for Ashley to visit yeah. so that we can open them. So I don't really remember what I bought. But, but that's the fun of it. Yeah. If you knew exactly what was in there. It's like Christmas. And what are we doing? All right, give me that sheet. Give me that sheet. Hey, so I can tell you how much the books are. These ones were all very cheap. There is nothing above thought. Five seventy nine is the most expensive <laughs> book in this box. I'm just letting you know. Okay, and I got a lot of books in here. The whole box was fifty one forty two. Okay, <laughs> so it's not bad. You know, I don't feel so guilty. I don't buy fancy clothes and stuff. I just buy books. Where to start? I'll start with this because it's not a book. This is uh, a note card set that I bought. Oh, cool. Emma Bridgewater. I I'm a person who likes writing letters and sending mail, fun mail. I know a lot of people aren't really into that so much, but I love getting fun mail in the mailbox from other people. So I like to send cards once in a while. Oh, cool. I just want to open it so you can see what patterns it is. It's kind of like tattoo art almost. There's a, a bird. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, are they made so that you can like color them yourself? Because you could totally do that. That'd be fun. Like People wouldn't totally... want my coloring. Oh, yes they bad. would. I would want your coloring. It was like tattooy. Yeah, just to for say. For a wonderful friend. Just to say. For you. For you. So these are kind of um, whatever you want it to be. So it could be thank you card. It could be. Even the envelopes are nice. Yeah. If I can get one. Yeah, those are cool. Look at those envelopes. I don't, I don't know if yeah. you guys can see that. I didn't know they sold this stuff. It just popped up. I'm like, yes, please give that to me. Give it me. Oh, it's my favorite. Well, it's not my favorite, but it's like. Oh. Yeah. It's a Briggerton book! Yes, the Briggertons! The Briggertons now, if you, if you don't know about the Briggertons, you have to go back and watch our first video <laughs> uh, in which we talk about the Briggertons a lot. And having a Briggerton moment. <laughs> but like, sometimes you just need a Briggerton moment. So this is a novel by Julia Quinn. It's a romance novel. Avon Books does a lot of historical romance novels. I picked up one of her books randomly, I don't know, Several months ago, anyway, and it was a Briggerton's book, and I read it in an afternoon. It was just like delightful, and it's uh, it's just easy reading, but it's fun. So there's other books in the family. I think I started reading it like book four. It didn't matter. Like, you can pick up a book anywhere, <laughs> in it, and it's an individual story of someone from the Briggerton family. <laughs> so now I want to read more characters of the Briggerton. So so let's let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Unlike most men of his acquaintance, Gregory Briggerton believes in true love, and he is convinced that when he finds the woman of his dreams. He will know in an instant that she is the one. Mm. And that's exactly what happened, except, well, I'm not going to tell you the rest. You're going to have to buy the book. <laughs> uh, and, have your, and have your very own personalized Briggerton moment. moment. <laughs> yes! Anyway, awesome. <laughs> this is different. So this book is called Celtic Lightning, Ooh. How the Scots and Irish Created a Canadian Nation. That was my nickname in high school. Celtic, Celtic Lightning? 
<laughs> I'm gonna tell you a funny story. <laughs> Just a quick story. Um, so I was teaching up in northern Manitoba on a Cree reserve up there, and uh, I went to a party, and someone there was like, Joel, we're gonna give you your Indian name. And I was like, oh, I'm curious now. So the Indian name I got was White Lightning. Yes. And I'm like, that's kind of appropriate. So appropriate. <laughs> It's so appropriate. So I'm white lightning. Yeah. And uh, this is Celtic lightning. But so as white lightning, I am, uh, <laughs> I have like, I mean, everyone in Canada usually comes from somewhere else unless you're an Aboriginal person. So my family is half Scottish and the Scottish side of my family has been here for quite a long time farming in Ontario. Well, with the last name like Ferguson. Ferguson, the Ferguson clan. And then, uh, and then the other part of my family came here from Holland after World War II. So um, anyway, I'm just curious about about the history of the Scots. And, and well, Justin. and apparently this is the author who wrote How the Scots Invented Canada, which is a book that I have. I don't know whether I've read all of it, but mm -hmm. I've definitely read like parts of it and it is really interesting. So um, yeah, so it's like the almost the sequel. <laughs> the sequel. It's, got a, it's got a recommendation by Peter Mansbridge, if any Mansbridge. Canadian viewers know that. Yeah. So that's hardcore. That's a good uh, Canadian recommendation. <laughs> anyway. I love it. Yeah. I like the little maple leaves with the tartan too. It's yeah. cute. Some uh, cool. non-fiction. Yeah. Um, the next book we have here is The Dark Missions of Edgar Brim. Ooh. And uh, this is by Shane Peacock, and he wrote the Boy Sherlock Holmes series. I don't know much about this book. Uh, it's supposedly fantasy, and it said that the main character suffered from night terrors since he was the cradle, which I also suffered from night terrors uh, as a kid, and I was a massive sleepwalker and all kinds of like traumatizing dreams. And uh, the back, it's so I was interested, it says, Edgar Brim can't breathe, an old woman is upon him. You know. Yeah. She digs her knees into his chest, her talon hands grip his throat, and her vile breath assaults Ew. him. Only his brain is alive and it's on fire. He wants to scream but can't. He opens his mouth but no sound comes out. This time the old crone may kill him. He is sure that one day she will. He tries to tell himself that she doesn't exist, but he knows better. The hag is as authentic as the moors around them. I mean, if you're going to have a dark story, it's got to be set in the moors, right? The hag! The hag of the moors? The hag is a common thing of, like, sleep paralysis. It's also called yeah. the hag, so... Yeah. Anyway, I don't know he's got a bullet. I don't know what's going on with that book, but it sounds intriguing. Sure does. Yeah. Bleak Scottish moors, man. Yeah. And the hag. Yeah. The hag. The hag. The next book I got is She Rides Shotgun, and uh, this was a cheap book, so I just thought, eh, throw it in the mix. But, uh, $1.89. $1.89 for a hardcover fiction. And this is um, about a, a younger girl who's 11 years old, and uh, She Rides Shotgun. Um, I think it's about a family where if the dad is. Her dad's just out of jail and driving a stolen car. So she's going shotgun to robberies and stuff in a car. Oh. So it's kind of... Uh, well, that sounds fun. Kind of crimey, kind I of mean, Bonnie and Clyde with a lot of Messed up, but fun. Yeah. Yeah. Who doesn't want to go commit crimes with their dad, really? I mean, mm. Who's to say we all... Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're yeah. going to have to cut that out of the video for the <laughs> So Sorry, Dan. Yeah, I didn't mean to give your secrets away. Uh, this is the set here. Alex and Eliza, a love story, and these ones are by um, Melissa De La Cruz, and I've read something by her before, she's a YA author, um, but this is more, um, I think this is about like Alexander Hamilton, like I think it's uh, Civil War, oh okay, <laughs> Alexander Hamilton, War. yeah, and Elizabeth Schuler. So it's more of like a American history kind of yeah, do you, romance. Yeah. Do story, you think so. do you think she only wrote these after Hamilton became really like popular the the um, you know rapping Broadway show we'll and then the she's like, well, Alexander Hamilton is like really popular. Right 2017. Now. Yeah. So probably this one is. 2018. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we'll check it out. They have cool covers, although this one is. It might that, did you get a discount? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheap. I like cheap books. The next one is Scythe. 
And this is a, a story by Neil Schusterman. And I've seen a lot of people have been reading this. Um, but I liked it because Neil Schusterman, he, read, he wrote Unwind. And if you have read this and you, and you like it, read Unwind. Because that one I, I did with my grade 8 class. And the kids love that story. It's kind of messed up. It's creepy. <laughs> and it's basically like the other book, Unwind. I'll put that down so it's not this book. But Unwind is about um, a world, a dystopian kind of world, where your parents can choose to have you unwound if they don't like you. If they don't like how you've turned out by the time you're like 13, they can just take your body apart. Oh my god, my parents definitely would have done yeah, that when I was yeah. 13 and if that had been an option. It's, it's gruesome. <laughs> and they recycle the body parts and they show up on other people and stuff. It's yeah, weird, but, but like kids in grade 8 loved it. Well, so. and honestly, if you want kids that age to want to read stuff, you got to get something that's like a little messed up. Yeah. Because and they like talking about, about it. There's a lot of questions about that. It's like, well, I would have been, my parents would have torn me apart. I'm like, that's right. 13, that's like the worst age. <laughs> so, so this is about Grim Reapers, I'm assuming. In a world with no hunger, no disease, no war, no misery, humanity has conquered all those things and has even conquered death. Now size are the only ones who can end life, and they are commanded to do so in order to keep the size of the population under control. Mm. Yeah. So maybe they're human Grim Reapers. Oh, yeah. The, like the art on this is really cool. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's actually got kind of like a like an old communist feel to the yeah, it does. Like, artwork. It totally has that Which poster, I'm down. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Anyway, so there, I think there's two books in that series so far, but uh, I'm interested to read that. I want to borrow that one when you're done. He was a good, I liked his writing for young people. Um, the next book I got was Your Song Changed My Life by Bob Boylan. And this is um, a collection, it's, it's by the host of uh, NPR's All Songs Considered. Oh, it's signed! Ooh! Nice! I love getting a surprise sign signing here. Um, so it's, this is, I think this is talking about, um, artists and saying what songs influence them. So I see Colin Malloy is on the back of the Decemberists. They're one of my favorite bands. Mm. So I'd be interested in reading, uh, his essay or whatever. I assume that there, it's a collection of essays. I could be totally wrong. Okay. So this is a diverse collection of personal experiences, both ordinary and extraordinary. Your song, Changed My Life, illustrates the ways in which music is revived, restored, and mm -hmm. revolutionized. It's also a testament to the power of music in our lives and an inspiration for future artists and music lovers. So uh, it talks about, um, it says different people and, and the voices of iconic and up-and-coming musicians including Dave Grohl, Jimmy Page, Michael Stipe, Kerry Brownstein, Smokey Robinson, and Jeff Tweedy, among others. Oh, so, Chris Thiele too. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> Love yeah. him. So anyway, I just thought that was neat. I love music. I'm a music nerd. Yeah. So, oops. <laughs> I say Get it. rowdy! <laughs> we haven't even been drinking. This, this is time. like brunch time here, yo. Uh, the next book I got is called A Secret Gift, and it's by Ted Gupp. <laughs> <laughs> Ted Gupp. But it's um, it's it's how one man's kindness and a trove of letters reveal the hidden history of the Great Depression. So. I, I love a good tearjerker, you know, I don't. and I, I like uh, nonfiction as well as fiction. And this one is about the Depression, and there was a small paper in Ohio, and the, there was an ad in there that offered cash gifts to 75 families in distress. And you could send a letter describing what your hardship was, and to this benefactor calling himself Mr. B. Vardo, and um, he would help them out. So, anyway, 70 years later, Ted Gupp, Goop, Gupp, found the letters in a suitcase belonging to his grandfather, and he unveiled the story that his grandfather was the guy who was helping him. Oh, out. that actually gave me goosebumps. Like, I have yeah. real goosebumps. So, so, so it sweet. sounds like really uh -huh. cute and just a neat thing of like the generations before you and what they've been through and what they've done to yeah. the world and had impact on. So, I thought that was. Yeah. It looked like a good book, a good story. That's nice. That's yeah. cute. My mom's from Ohio. Oh, did you know that? I did not. Yeah. yeah. Two girls there. That's cool. <laughs> Sandusky. Get Ran, your point on. Random Ran story. Mm -hmm. Another nonfiction. This book's got. This box is a bit of a nonfiction. This is Endurance, um, which is the true story of the polar explorer Ernest Shackleton's ship in Antarctica, and they got yeah they got stuck there on the ice for quite a while. So. 
and with 27 crew members. So this is a true story of their 10 month journey stuck on the ice in Antarctica. That's cool. I'm a little bit more into like the Erebus and the Terror, mm -hmm. just where I've lived in the Arctic and those are like a little bit more mysterious, but I, yeah, I'm down. Yeah. I, it's hard to believe that people would take wooden ships into those areas and yeah. Like, because I also live in the Arctic, yes. and it's like, even with the modern conveniences you have now, you're like, if something went wrong, you're going to die. Like, you know, yeah. not, I mean, I mean the yeah. Inuit people will probably live because they have skills, yeah. but I am a, I'm like, I always <laughs> You're thought, white lightning. Yeah, white lightning, you know, and, and I, we were on a plane, I remember being on a plane, flying over the Northwest Territories, a tiny little plane, and people were allowed to bring their harpoons and guns yeah. and everything on the plane, no problem. And people say, oh, is that a concern to you? And I was like, no, it's not a concern. I was like... You ever seen the movie Alive, people? Like, I'm like, if this plane goes down, yes. I'm the one being eaten first. For sure. Because okay. I have no skills. We would get on planes with, like, whole caribou carcasses that yeah. people were bringing back from hunting trips and stuff. I mean, they're frozen. Mm -hmm. But, like, literally a, just a huge dead caribou frozen. <laughs> but, hey, yeah, if you if you crash land, at least you can Suffer. eat that caribou. I know. So. But I was like, I am the, I'm like, I am, I can't hunt. I can't do anything here. I'm dead. Like, unless these people take care of yeah. me, the plane goes down. I'm like, That's I am true. the one... So anyway, bring your guns and <laughs> hunt something that's not me, please. Anyway, <laughs> that's terrible. I don't think people would even do it. Another book I have, I liked my time there, uh, Disciples, and this is by Douglas Waller, and this is another nonfiction. I was, must have been in yeah, you were in a real nonfiction mode Ooh, there. But anyway, um, this one is about the spy masters who fought in World War II. And the backstories of intelligence officers and their espionage and, and sabotage and everything like that. Oh, cool. So, um, yeah, it's a world of spies and it's real life World War II spy masters. And uh, I'm curious about that. I, I'm really always interested in in events in history. I've always been interested in World War II. Um, my family has a lot of stories from that time being in Holland. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they live near a concentration camp. And... Um, help people escape the camp. So I've grown up with a lot of stories from that. So I've always been curious about um, World War II and what caught, like how could people let that happen? All these kinds of things, the, the geopolitical kind of landscape, everything. And yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't want to get too no, political no on comment, this uh, video. No comment, but uh, but, uh, but learn from history. People. Yeah. Um, we'll just say that. So anyway, that's a heavy big book, but we'll, uh, yeah. yeah, we'll give that a go. The World War II missions of the CIA directors who fought for w Wild Bill Donovan. Mm. Makes no sense to me, but I'm sure if I read the book, <laughs> that would be that's such a big book. It'd be good to have it by the couch so you could pick it up and read a, a chapter or a story once yeah. in a while, like as you go. Um, or a toilet book. I don't read books in the toilet or on the toilet. Well, I don't. Aren't we fancy? I have a nice one that looks out on the ocean, so I usually just. <laughs> Look out at the birds and whatnot. Well, I suppose if you have an ocean view toilet, then you can be I don't need John's bathroom helper or whatever that is. Anyway, the next book I have is River Keep by Martin Stewart. Um, to be honest, I probably bought it for the cover. <laughs> this is a very Sparley Sailors yeah. cover. I like sea monsters. It has a bow with an eye. We've and a big got boats, out. tentacles. Some kind We've of got science. Some science equipment. Looks like a Dickens factory down mm -hmm. there in 1800. Let's see. Okay, this is what the back says. A wild river, deep and unexplored. A monster sea beast newly awakened. A teenage boy desperate to save his father. A journey infused with magic and danger. An unforgettable debut. Yeah, this looks right up your alley. Like, so much. <laughs> magic, I can't even explain. sea monsters. I think yeah. it might be YA. It has it a teenager. Looks, it, has that, it has that feel. It also has very large print, which sometimes is... Either YA well. or seniors. Yes. <laughs> It has a map. I like that. Cool. Yeah. So River Keep. Yeah. I mean, they say don't judge a book by its cover, but like sometimes mm -hmm. you do. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? I read horrible books because the cover was cool. I was like, this was a mistake. <laughs> I I, I, I for your marketing. Uh, I want to see what this other cover looks like. Oh, it's just black with some blue. I'm always excited. I'm like, is there going to be something super fancy? I don't think I None of them. Not any of the ones that you've undressed so far. No. Like the nakedness, and that's it. Oh, <laughs> there will be more, I'm sure. Once I get through a stack of these, I'll 
earn myself another round. Yeah. So we we're already talking a little bit about what we were reading recently, mm -hmm. um, but is there anything particular you'd like to talk about that you've been reading? I I just am really down for the the Eye of the World, um, the Wheel of Time series. I never read before, and I and I was super stoked about it. And I asked my mom. I bought the first three books in the series in a box set from chapters and I asked my mom she volunteers at a library in Florida for part of the year so I said you know if you find any of these books in the used bookstore at the library like get them for me and she ended up having a friend that works down there who had them all and was willing nice. to give them yeah. to her so anyway I have the whole up to number 14 I oh, have, I have several well. books in the waiting there so I don't think we have all of them but yeah, I'm really liking that series. I'm excited because Amazon's making a TV show about it. So I was just telling Jules about a series. It's a multiple series of books. Uh, the first kind of series, at least I believe, that was written is called The Paracel Protect Protectorate mm -hmm. by Gail Carriger. Your Carriger? I'm not sure. We her already. Anyway, <laughs> um, they're like steampunk supernatural, like there's werewolves and vampires and stuff, but steampunk. But they're very cute and fun. They're so funny and like I just cannot recommend them highly enough. I just read the last one in the most recent series and I was so bummed that it was the last one of that series. It's so hard. <laughs> I'm hoping like she'll continue on in the universe um, but that's my recommendation for this video. I don't know why I decided we should do reading recommendations. Well, that's probably people that like reading books. Uh, I just felt like that might be appropriate. Yeah. No. I'm so, excited because she's going to hook me up with an audio book of the first yeah. one so I can listen yeah. to it on my trip back home to see my folks. So I'm excited yeah. to listen to that. Audio book, don't be ashamed to listen instead of read. Like, don't let people shame you and tell you that it's not reading. Although we do love paper books, obviously, and it's kind of a different experience. But if you don't have time to sit down, you know, and like focus on reading a book, listen to an audio book when you're in the car or at the gym or yeah. whatever you're doing amongst your day, even doing dishes, housework, yeah. whatever, like get it in you. Yeah. Get it in you. That is the motto of this show. Get it in you. Reading. Get, get it in you. <laughs> yes. And on that note. And don't, yeah, library card. I was going to say that your library card, but never mind. Yeah, no, library cards are good. And you can always get audio books. Don't get your library card in you. <laughs> Put it in your pocket. <laughs> anyway, I've been Ashley. This has been Jules. <laughs> Thanks for joining us yet again. Yeah. And uh, if you guys keep enjoying our videos, we'll try to keep doing them for you as long as we can. Yeah. Okay. Happy reading. Bye. Bye. <laughs> get it in you. Reading, get it in you. It's the best. <laughs>